Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 27.2 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses guide wire entrapment and fracture. This is part of the equipment loss and entrapment category, one of the three major categories of coronary complications, the other two being acute vessel closure and perforation. What causes guide wire entrapment and fracture. For entrapment, a common cause is jailing the guide wire during bifurcation standing, especially if uh, there is a loop at the tip of the jailed guide wire while it is being pulled back. Another cause is guide wire deformation, for example, when using the knuckling technique for CTO subintimal techniques. Another one is to use a body wire with a filter wire. And that's something very important to not do, because if a stent is inadvertently deployed over the body wire, this will lead to filter entrapment and often the need for emergency surgery for removal. And finally, severe calcification can predispose to guide wire entrapment. When it comes to fracture, the most common cause is aggressive pulling of a jailed guide wire. And that is why, as we will discuss, if the guide wire becomes jailed, the thing not to do is to pull hard. It's exactly the opposite. If the guide wire becomes entrapped, one should be very gentle and use maneuvers to free it because pulling hard may actually lead to either fracture or deformation and make things worse. Another potential cause for fracture is over rotation of the guide wire and performing atherectomy over a kinked wire. Whether a viper wire is used for, for orbital atherectomy or the rotor wire for rotational, if it becomes kinked, it should be re replaced with a new guide wire. So, prevention for entrapment. One way would be to avoid jailing, but jailing is important for preserving the side branch. One should avoid aggressive guide wire manipulations, straighten the tip before removing a wire that has been jailed through the stand. For guide wire fracture, the key thing is to not pull hard. And another important uh, preventing factor is to not perform a therectomy over a kinked atherectomy wire. What to do if, despite those efforts, guide wire entrapment or fracture occurs? For entrapment, the first thing is to not pull hard. Again, this can lead to fracture, to deformation, can make things worse. The first step is to advance a small balloon or a microcatheter as far distally as possible, and then pull gently. And by doing this, in 90 plus percent of the time, the jailed wire will actually become un uh, unplugged and will come back. If this does not work, then the balloon or the microcatheter can be advanced even further and the balloon can be inflated to free the wire. If this doesn't work, then a second wire can be advanced next to the first wire and then a balloon inflated to try to free the wiring, the wire from the surrounding tissue. If, despite all these efforts, the wire remains, then emergency surgery might be required. When it comes to guide wire fracture, the key question there is whether wire unraveling has occurred. The guide wires often have a lot of small coils at the tip, and if they unravel, there can be a lot of material in the coronary artery or in the aorta that requires removal. If the guide wire is not unraveled, the question is, does the wire fragment need to be removed, yes or no? Because sometimes if it's a small wire fragment distally, it may be left in place, or if it is a longer one, but still entirely in the coronary, it can either be retrieved or um, it can be stented over the wire fragment. So the same thing for wire unraveling. If the wire has unraveled, then if we're able to cover the fragments of the wire with the stand, then this is done. But if not, then emergency may be required. And these are some cases that illustrate those points. The first one is case 33 for the manual of PCI. This was a patient with a significant left main disease as well as circumflex disease. The plan was to perform percutaneous coronary intervention. Wires were placed in the circumflex and the LAD. There was a lesion in the circumflex that was successfully stented. And then uh, the plan was to stand across the ostium of the circumflex, which was done, and that provided a nice result. However, when we tried to pull the circumflex wire back, the wire came and actually tied a knot on the left main stand. And 
Possibly the reason why this happened is that the guide wire tip was looped and that is why it went through the struts of the other strands at tight the knot. So when this happened, we now have an entrapped wire into the left main stand. So what to do? We did several attempts. We did use snares. We did have actually, despite of the pulling, we did have a fracture of the guide wire. We kept on trying with uh, different snares, but then we were unable to actually remove it. And the patient went to surgery, which was a good thing, because when the surgeon opened the aorta, there was this uh, metal coil all the way into the aorta, something that we did not appreciate and uh, in geographically, and that's something that likely happened because of the use of snares. So all this material was actually inside the patient's coronary in the aorta. Had this been left into the aorta or the coronary, bad things would have happened. So in summary, if uh, there is a wire entrapment, do not pull hard. If the wire breaks, then it can unravel and that this is what can happen. So in this case, we had guide wire entrapment. We pulled, eventually the guide wire fractured, it unraveled, we could not cover it, it was all the way in the aorta, and the patient had to go to surgery. This is another case, a patient with NLADCTO. The section oriented technique was used with a knuckle filter XT, which unfortunately became stuck into the coronary artery. Something unusual, but it can happen. Um, we tried several ways, but this was uh, not successful. And then eventually we were able to cross the CTO with another wire. We then ballooned around that area of guide wire entrapment. And then we were able to actually remove the guide wire fragment. It was very deformed, as can be seen in this image. And then we did IVUS because sometimes wire fragments might remain in the coronary artery. Fortunately, that was not the case here. And then a nice final result was achieved. So in contrast to the previous case, we had a case of guide wire entrapment. We did not pull hard here. We could not uh, pull the wire back, but we used the technique of a second guide wire next to the first one. We inflated the balloon and then we pulled it gently and the entrapped wire came out. Moving on to a third case. This is a patient uh, um, who has a right coronary artery uh, significant lesion. There are previous stents. The vessel was engaged with an AL1 guide. PTCA was done. There was um, loss of wire position, rewiring attempts, and then during those attempts, the wire came back and similar to the first case we saw, it actually tied a knot through the previously placed stents on the right coronary artery. We did multiple attempts for retrieval. We used a second guide catheter, put balloons next to it, tried to um, improve it, but it was not able to be uh, retrieved. It was eventually um, tried to snare and uh, the wire fractured but we now have a fragment of the wire still protruding all the way back into the aorta. And this is an example where we have the wire in the aorta. We cannot cover this wire, it's all the way in the aorta. And uh, that is why surgery was required. This is the TE, we can see the wire flopping into the aorta. Again, in different views, we can see the guide wire. And again, more different views. And then here the wire on 3D views. And this is what eventually came out. So similar to the first case, we did have the wire being stuck in the previous stand, then unraveled, and we have the wires coiling, coil, coils protruding into the aorta. So wire fracture, unraveling, we could not remove the wire, and eventually the patient had to go to surgery. Case number four, uh, this is a previously published case in which a guide wire became entrapped into a septal perforator branch. It subsequently fractured, but the wire fra fragment remained inside the coronary artery and was successfully covered with stents without the need for surgery. So in this case, wire fractured and unraveled, but stents could cover it and that uh, prevented more problems. This is the last case, a published case, about what can go wrong if uh, the guide wire fracture and the filaments are retained and not treated. Similar to cases one and three, there was uh, a guide wire entrapment the guide wire subsequently fractured, snares were used to get it out. There was a significant unraveling of the guide wire despite removing some of the filaments. There were still remaining filaments as seen by intravascular ultrasounds protruding into the aorta. The patient was actually dismissed on triplet therapy, but died four days later. Presumably, 
the reason for death might have been that thrombosed uh, the left main uh, was thrombosed because of um, the filaments of the wire. So to summarize, the guide wire entrapment and fracture can be a very serious complication leading to emergency bypass or death. The key for prevention is to not pull hard if a guide wire becomes entrapped. Instead, advance a balloon or a microcatheter as far distally as possible. In the vast majority of cases, this will be the only thing you will need to, de to do and that will successfully retrieve the wire. But sometimes more aggressive maneuvers like having a second guide wire and a balloon next to the entrapped wire may be required. If the guide wire fractures and there is wire unraveling, which can often be visualized with intravascular ultrasound, the key question is, can we remove the fragments or cover them with stents? If yes, then conservative management is done percutaneously, but if not, then emergency surgery may be required. Thank you very much.